What is up, everyone? Welcome to Beastly Thoughts Live, Episode 6, guys. How is everyone doing? Welcome to the show this week, everyone. Hopefully you are doing well. We got an awesome show for you this week. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. We're going to be talking about a lot of news. Uh, Black Ops 4 Beta just came out. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of awesome stuff. My co-hosts and good friends, Beastly Gamer and Not Too Nerdy. How are you guys doing? Hey! Good, I'm, feeling, good, man. I'm feeling really good. Uh, I was under a lot of pressure this week. I had to finish up our Beastly Thoughts art. Finally got it done this morning. Yeah, check out that t-shirt uh, too, man. Look at that. Yeah, I, made, I made this a few minutes ago, right before the show. It's still hot off the press. But yeah, man, it's been a really interesting week. Uh, as you guys may or may not know, who follow me on Twitter, uh, another podcast that I, I, I do or did ended last week. Mm -hmm. So Revolver Live is now over. So now I can kind of put all my energy into Beastly Thoughts, which is like leaving my ex, my new wife to go back to my ex because my ex actually cooked better. <laughs> we, we cooking again, hey, baby. There you go. All right. <laughs> I'm really, really excited. I think it's going to be a great show, Robbie. I don't know how you uh, you, you uh, compile so many notes. It's like looking at the source. I'm intimidated. But it's going to be a great show. Super excited. It's going to be fucking lit, boys. It's going to be a good, good show. It's going to be awesome. What have you guys been uh, playing? For, for people looking at, at, at uh, over at Hex Screen. Yeah, you see, like, it's a little empty behind me on this side and this side. Well, I just moved, and uh, it was a lot place. of work. You know, it's, it wasn't that far away. It's about 45 minutes away from where I lived before, but, like, mm -hmm. it's different place. You know, I have a lot more room here. It's just that I have to set up. The stuff that's left, though, pretty much is just the gaming stuff. So behind me, you'll see, like, Fun a gaming stuff. display. A lot, yeah, a lot of stuff there. I actually have... On this side, which I'll show you guys maybe a video or something um, of the things I've displayed. I got some like Star Wars stuff displayed. Um, I got like uh, Wolverine, like a whole bunch of different things. that are like in little uh, frames that are hung up, but not on the it wall. It sounds like, like you're you know, an epic, an epic person. Yeah, so it's 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 you pretty two cool. two things I love, and it's on your fucking wall. Yeah, <laughs> sounds pretty dope. Lightsabers man. on mine right now. So yes, I feel you. So it was a lot of things I, I got to do still, but, you know, at least I got the porn things. You know, I got the internet mm -hmm. from Verizon. I made sure I got the gigabit per second, you know, um, that that's important. Even though it's not always one gigabit per second, just let you guys know that. It's not always there. It's like around that 700 megabits per second, but still 700 megabits per second for a lot of people like they, that's, you know. That's, yeah, that's insane. I, I, I got one megabit per second. Yeah, wait. My, my, I do. Uh, my, my or download. Uh, down. Wait, you're I'm talking about for 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 internet? Yes. Wait, I, so you only have one big of it or one gigabit? You mean? I mean gigabit. Yeah. Oh, I'm about to say that I'm makes like, more sense. I get, I get, I get, I get one look, like look, one megabyte. One that's megabit. nothing. I'm like, damn, BC, no, no. you better get yeah, your money like back. So I, I get one gig up and down. Uh, I mean, uh, down per second, and everything in my house is connected to it. Uh, yeah. We got a really good deal on it. Uh, I got two uh, smart TVs in here. This computer. Smart TV in the living room, uh, five PS4s, uh, Xbox One, Switch, and about ten laptops That's connected. Nuts. Yeah. And and I mean, and everybody's on right now. You know, my kids are here, yeah, my man. boys, uh, and and I'm, I haven't had any issues. You guys remember back in the old Beastly Thoughts days? You know, I, I would have major major issues, and uh, yeah. we went through Comcast, and they shit all over us. And AT and T, you know, they kind of offered us a much better deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we found out about the one gig down. It was night and day compared to what we used to have. And I, I feel you. Put it that way. You used to be the king. I'm right here with you, brother. But the one thing I want to show you guys as soon as it's done, um, I, it's going to be a little complex, but I figured out how to do it. Almost all my devices will be controlled by Alexa. So, I mean, voice activate where there's a PC. I'm going to have the TV turn on and turn off all the TVs. The lights in the kitchen, the lights here in the living room, like I already have everything that I need. It's now about programming each one individually. I did the room so far, I tested it all out. I could turn on the TV, turn on the lights, I could set the lights to a different color if I want to. I could do anything I want to just by telling Alexa to set it up for me. I mean, well, wow. I, I heard about this 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 harlot. Uh, does she connect to um, Android? Uh, what does she connect to? Is it all Apple stuff? I mean, what? No, it's, Alexa, it's Amazon, right? Yeah, but yeah. Amazon, so Alexa could get any device that's Alexa activate. So there's iOS devices, Android devices, there's TVs. Like, and if your TV is not even a smart TV, now they have the Alexa Cube, which is what I got right now. That's a Fire Cube. And that Fire Cube can actually 
turn, um, turn on. on. It could turn because it has infrared light in it. So the infrared it can actually like an IV blaster or the IR blaster. So it could turn on devices, anything. So it could turn on my PlayStation. It could turn on anything I want to. And I could say, Alexa, turn this on. Like, and by the time I'm there, like it's already on. So I could say, yeah. I, it'll even she'll start to remember. For example, if I say. I watched The Walking Dead, right? Sometimes older episodes on Netflix. Yeah, because those I tell the only her, ones that are really good. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah but yeah. I tell her, <laughs> that's messed up. But I tell her, <laughs> uh, turn on Walking Dead. She'll remember that I used to watch on Netflix. So she'll turn mm -hmm. on the TV, put Netflix on right away, and automatically start playing The Walking Dead. So I don't have to do any of those steps. I don't have to look for the show. She does it for me, and it's there. So Dude, that, that's, that's crazy. pretty cool. No way. It's like... <laughs> It, it sounds wild. almost too good to be true. It's like going into your bedroom, your girl is already in your favorite position. Hey, I just got <laughs> off work. Hey, I'm um, ready for you. It sounds really cool. They had a lot of sales on Amazon for Alexa recently. Hey. Maybe I'll look into that because everything here is smart besides some of my kids. But uh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a low blow. No, no, a, a, a good shout out, right? My son, Brett, my 17-year-old, uh. he got his first job yesterday. And uh, as a dad, I'm super proud of him. Way to go, son. Right on. Working at, working at Subway right down the street from his school. So either he'll be fired for hooking people up or leave because everybody's <laughs> talking about him for making sandwiches. But congratulations. Really, really proud of you, son. Right Thanks. on. So we got an awesome show lined up. And we're going to start off with some really big news. It really touches my heart. Uh, if, if it weren't for the Beastly Thought shirt, I'd be wearing a PlayStation shirt because the PS4 is sold 82.2 million, million, million units. Oh, my God. Since its launch in November of 2013, mm -hmm. announced during the latest earnings call for the company, 82, they have sur they've surpassed the PS3 and the Xbox 360. Yes, or very close to them. Yeah. Holy like right shit. Right around that mark. Well, they didn't surpass them yet, but they're blowing them out the water in the time period, though, without it. They're blowing out everyone five? out the way. It, it, it surpassed the PS2, right, at this point, too? Yep. Yep. Right, it surpassed every console because when yeah. we take into account PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360, well, the Xbox 360 was slightly longer, but PS3's lifespan was nine years and it was in the mid 80 million range. Yeah, yeah. PS4 has been out for five years almost, yeah, not even you know, like four and a half. November will be five years and they're already there. So, this is tre trekking at least to be if not the greatest selling console of all time. I, that's the thing that kind of blows my mind. Everybody's talking about, this is the end of the consoles. I'm like, why would people think that when it's selling so well? If Sony's doing this well. Why would Question. They change? Yeah. Do you guys think the Switch will catch up to it? Like, uh, I mean, not catch up to it like that. that. And, and say in the future, you think the Switch will sell more? I think it can, yeah. Uh, Possibly. I, I was playing this before, Man, before you joined the call, Robbie. I mean, uh, heck. When Robbie and I were still naked, I was playing this game and uh, playing uh, uh, Resident Evil Revelations. Mm. And it's all I've been doing like in my spare time is I got 50 or 60 games on here now. I put a 128 gig uh, uh, SD card in here. Yeah. So it's like a ton of shit on it. This thing is amazing. I take it everywhere I go. When I'm at work, if I've got some downtime and everything's done, I pull this thing out and I live the dream that we, we used to dream of back in the day of having – Console quality gaming in the palm of your hand. This thing is amazing. Nothing else does what this thing does. So yeah, I, I think it can. I think it can uh, be viable competition. Sorry for that noise. Uh, for PlayStation in the future, not right now, but by the end of the year, this is going to outsell the Xbox One. Oh well, well it's, I mean, it's trekking too. So in three or four years, you know, it's just like it's not that impressive to be. I mean, it's like that, that's not the impressive part. Like I mean. <laughs> It's gonna surpass a lot. I think it's gonna come close to. Yeah, it's doing I don't so think it's well. gonna surpass the PS4 because I I don't think it's gonna. It's too, too far of a lead. Yeah, yeah I don't well, think I mean, it will either. How long has this been out? This has been out for a year and a half. Yes, March 2017 was when it came out. Okay, so it's been out for a year and a half. It's already beating a console that's been out for almost five years. That's yeah. a pretty de and when you take into account the Xbox One is just drastically outselling the Xbox 360. It's out, for, for the time frame, it's outselling it. It may be slowing down, but that, that was what was touted by Microsoft for such a long time. Mm -hmm. The Xbox One was outselling the 360. This is going to catch up with that in a year and a half, almost two years. This thing is a phenomenal seller. The yeah. one thing people forget to know is like PlayStation 4 hasn't gone to their 
the cheap, cheap version. They always do that in every generation where they have like, for example, there's no automatic. It doesn't grab the CD. Like you flip it up. Slide, and you you yeah, yeah it the down. super you slim. I remember that. One thing. of those super slims or one of those that that's way cheaper to make. But they still didn't get to that yet. Once they get to one of those, then they're going to sell for the people that never got a chance to get it. They're just going to buy a quick one because it'll be like 150 or something like that. And it'll be cheaper by then. So that's yeah. all I'm like. Do you they think still they'll be able to do that, that with a PS4? I think so. why not? Like because if you think about it, there's no it's still no, kind of high end technology. I mean, it's not it's not PC level, but when you take into account what it's able to do as far as the hardware, uh, I could possibly see maybe 220 or something. Maybe think about like the the touch the touch buttons and all the buttons you have right now. Like they remove that stuff when it's a cheap version. They don't have any of that stuff. They save so much money here and there just by doing that. You know what I mean? Like there's so, there's so many different things that they point. could do. The smaller it is, they don't have to use the like for example, like they have like the bigger power um, for the the PlayStation 4 Pro. Um, they don't right. have to include that. They, the cables get skinnier, which is cheaper. There's so mm -hmm. many ways they could cut and uh, do things on it. It's a lot cheaper. You know what I mean? Like so that's what I'm saying. Like it, it's definitely possible. Don't forget. Like at this point. The PS4, what it cost to make the PS4 went down a lot more than it is. So they they must be making profit now for these PS4s at this point because it's way cheaper to get those parts at the moment. I'm getting old, and I got so many PlayStations in the house. I don't even know at this point. What does the vanilla PlayStation 4 sell for now? Is it still is it 300 or 299? Yeah, it's 300 still. That's what I'm saying. They still 300 is something like this. That's what I'm saying. They're still making money off. The, they didn't yeah, really. They don't need drop a price it. drop. Yeah. Jeez, it's still three hundred dollars five years later, and it's still selling like this. That's pretty. That's pretty damn phenomenal. Yeah. That's like uh, uh, earth-shattering news when you look at the past. Within five years, everybody was price drop, price drop, price drop, another oh, yeah. price drop. Yeah. And PlayStation's done it once. They went from. They went from what was it four hundred dollars when it first came out? Yeah. To yeah. Two ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Man, it's, it's going to be interesting to see because we know that Microsoft and Sony are working on the next generation PlayStations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when, the, when, they're, when those things are getting ready to uh, be announced, uh, that's when we're going to start seeing interesting news. And everybody who's been crying for the last few years that mom and dad are too damn cheap to get me a PlayStation, uh, you know, mm -hmm. they're going to be able to get them probably 200 bucks. I can imagine 200, maybe even 150 if they cut back on some of these knickknacks that people don't really use. Because you're totally yeah, right. Cheap. The touchpad, wow. nobody uses that. Yeah, and all. even most games, like, you just, just there's no use for it. Like, you just don't yeah. need it. Yeah. All right. Insomniac Games Spider-Man, which launches exclusively for PlayStation on September 7th, has gone gold and has finished development. Yes. I'm excited about this. This game looks so good. I am so pumped for this game, dude. It looks amazing. Hector, you don't look like a Spider-Man fan right now. You I mean, Are you kidding me? Do you remember every podcast I wear is Spider-Man stuff? And like, <laughs> he about to grab Spider-Man off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> wow! You know what I'm saying, way to drop He's the fucking there, drop, right? the, drop I mean, the mic on me. I mean, <laughs> anyway, like, you're not a Spider-Man fan. Easy. He's like, I'm gonna prove I'm you so wrong. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I bow down to you, sir, because I just got it owned. Damn. <laughs> yeah, th this but, game it looks super exciting to me. It's been a long time though yeah. since I've been. Excited about a Spider-Man game, or really a superhero game in general. Uh, Batman was really, really great, like the first two games, yeah. mm -hmm. and then Dark it kind of lost its yeah, luster yeah. because everybody started copying that style. Mm -hmm. But this here, it seems like you're actually in control of the Spider-Man in the film. It seems so fluid to me. The thing is, though, people say that, but like Batman copied off Spider-Man because the original Spider-Man Two had that. Style where every time he saw the quick motion, he had a, the Spidey sense. That's that's what the purpose was. It was for the Spidey sense. That's why they did those quick motion, you know, the quick yeah. action stuff. Mm -hmm. And they, then they may have stole that dynamic, but not but, the gameplay mechanic. Yeah, they, Batman did it better. Like Batman, yeah, yeah. that's the thing. Batman did it now better. Shadow of Mordor yeah. and all that stuff is stolen that and kind of done it better than Batman yeah. because you know everybody. What's the, it's uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Yeah. And Batman, as far as action games, was the cream of the crop and probably still is for a lot of people who play video games. Oh, yeah. I just so, think Spider-Man makes more sense doing it because that's his... He actually has spider yeah. 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 so, How he is his, his, his character. His ears point yeah. out this way. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this game, it looks really, really great. And, and one thing about this game that I'm really excited about is 
it doesn't it's not tethered to any of the of the current mythos of what's going on with spider-man it's not yeah. tethered to the, these movies it's not tethered to toby Maguire. it's not tethered to this new spider-man it's its own contained comic book-esque story that has all the 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 insanity of these characters they didn't really go and try to make everybody realistic it just mm-hmm. seems like they are as they exist in the comic books mm-hmm. and to me that's what i really want to see so i I can't wait for September to play this game. It looks so if you guys so beat Spider-Man 2, like the original, when it, those versions, Spider-Man 2, I think it was on PlayStation 2. If you yeah, guys played that. I played it. I, I don't know if I so beat it, years. but I definitely played it. Heck, you know I'm yeah. old, man. Yeah, because I, I beat Spider-Man's that game and like every side mission. That was one of those games that I actually enjoyed just going around and like there's so much to do in those games. That's why, like, I know they did the same thing. Like, they mm-hmm. obviously put so much oh, yeah. side missions and little content that has nothing to do with the actual main story. But you go there and, like, save someone or you, someone just stole someone's purse. You go grab them. And the you Witcher go, style, but actually superhero. Or yeah. there's, there's, like, chase scenes where, like, someone robbed the bank. You have to go swing down the city and get them. They, they always have stuff like that. And I, I think but- that... It's kind of fun to do that. So This is one thing I'm really excited for for Spider-Man that a lot of people aren't talking about. The new swinging mechanic, it's not just hold down a button and swing. It's multiple buttons and, and articulating your fingers to do different things for each swing. Yeah. To me, learning that mechanic is going to make you feel like Spider-Man in the movies because you're going to be able to hit corners, swing around buildings, jump in the air, flip upside down, do all kind of crazy shit that, be so cool. that Spider-Man has yeah. been known to do. It might have a, you know, from what I understand, it has kind of a learning curve to it. You're not going to just pick it up and be a master. Mm-hmm. But to me, those kind of games are the ones that are most rewarding. So, yeah, yeah. the game looks like it's going to be a ton of fun. I can't wait. Man, I they, hope it's They good. look like they really worked on the animation, though. Like, the way Spider-Man moves and everything, like you're saying, basically. Like, it's not just the button mechanics. Like, literally, the way that the, the animation goes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks really, really cool. So, that's, that's going to be fun. Yeah. Do you guys pre-order it or? or you I'm not? pre-ordered. I'm going to oh. like just before it comes out and get it preloaded. You know, play it from when it comes yeah. out. See, when I pre-order stuff, I don't even preload it. Robbie told me about earlier today. So so frustrated about Call of Duty. Oh, More yeah. gaming news. Monster Hunter World has sold eight million units worldwide on the eve of the game's launch on PC. Eight million! Holy smokes! Yeah. I didn't expect that. Me neither. Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter has always been kind of a niche thing. Nintendo really kind of made it prevalent and put it out there for the gamers on the, the 3DS and on the Wii U, yeah, at least for the, the Western audience, because Monster Hunter has always been a Jap- Japan-centric kind of experience. Oh, yeah, it's huge I played there. the first ones on PSP. Mm-hmm. I know what I'm talking about. And uh, I guess, you know, when people get exposed to something great, we play it. You know, I haven't played as much of it now as I'd like to because we're kind of engulfed in the Solstice of Heroes thing on Destiny 2, which has got my feet to the fire. I can't think of anything else right now. But, uh, yeah, 8 million units sold. How long ago did that launch? Uh, it launched in January, and it's really yeah. cool to see this game. Jeez, like, just, really? Yeah, and it's cool to see this game appeal, like, so strongly to, you know, people Across over here, board, right? Like yeah. a Western audience, which no Monster Hunter has really ever done. Like, for me, I'm, like stoked to play this game on pc like i've never gotten into monster hunter but there's just something about this game i've heard so many good things about it where i'm like yeah i already pre-ordered it like that's how excited i am for it and i've never I, really even I played know how, monster I know hunter how you feel, that's uh, what Robbie, i mean like that's how this game has been captivated the stranglehold people. of like nintendo that's the thing if they they finally have a chance to go on all these consoles and exactly. stuff i think that's that as well that's what really finally because people have never got a chance mm-hmm. to play that they wanted to see it for the first that's time that's not yeah. fair that's not fair because Monster Hunter was first with Sony. Well, it was, but I was saying, but Nintendo had like a stranglehold. I, don't I think, think, I, think yeah. I think, I think it was a mutually uh, productive exchange. Mm-hmm. The Monster Hunter games on 3DS sold phenomenally well on the 3DS. Uh, the fact that you're able to play Monster Hunter on 3DS against someone or with someone on the Wii U just kind of bridged all kinds of gaps. And I think that that really helped the Western audience kind of see what can happen with a game like this. Yeah. And of course, having a game like this is never going to come to the Wii U. It's not going to be on the Switch. What choice did they have? You know, technology's moving forward. The game engine looks great. You know, the character models are amazing. Speaking of getting into Monster Hunter, Robbie, those girls that you can make in this game are pretty damn nice. Um, the, a, <laughs> like you're saying, though, you said it's like a niche game, though. I don't know if it's a niche game. They never it's know. It's not anymore. 
it was always on niche consoles, though. That's the thing. It was always on consoles that not everyone had. That, so I think they never yes. really got a chance Good to point. see exactly. how many people liked it, you know? Yeah. I think that's what it was. Like, the first could... three were, like, on PSP exclusively. Yeah, that's exactly. Like, it's always been a handheld game, it seems, too, yeah. or PS2 and stuff. Now it's like they're coming out with this AAA, like, full console game that, you know, appeals to a lot of new people, so... Yeah, yeah you, that's that's a great damn point. And one thing I'll say about the original Muster Hunters on PSP, I, I bought them and I played them because, you know, I would drive around and, and working. I did a lot of driving and sitting and waiting, you know. Mm-hmm. When you're selling drugs, you know, you got to wait for people. Uh, right, and so good to know I more played about these. Your side I, life. <laughs> you, know, you have no idea how much people will pay for spray painted uh, uh, Tylenol. But. The thing uh, that I, I really got frustrated about with Monster Hunter on PSP was that it seemed like a console experience on the go because of, uh, I guess it was kind of too deep for me at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I, I won't say that it was confusing, but I will say it was slightly convoluted. And even Monster Hunter World is very convoluted. You got 25 menus to go through to do something. And that's yeah. just that Japan... Japan, you can feel it. The blood of Japan is in that game. And at that time, when I was playing my PSP, riding around Atlanta, uh, and I had to go through 10 different menus to try to figure out how to do something, I was like, oh my God, just I'll play something else because it's just a little too much for me. But on a console, to me, it makes a little bit more, mm-hmm. a little bit more sense. But you're right, man. Something that was was niche is not niche anymore. Yeah, that's one. That's a huge amount of sales for one year. But you notice that just real quick, you notice, notice like you notice it's happened for a lot of other games. Like there were niche games, like for example, Dark Souls and like something like Neo will be niche, but then like all these niche games are becoming Ooh. more mainstream. Oh yeah. Like which is it's just kind of funny like to see that. Like it's like something that not everyone enjoyed. All of a sudden all these people are starting to like it, which I, it's great to see actually. So I wish it happened with Space Channel Five. <laughs> What? <laughs> Ooh la no. la. Yeah, that I'm was my fucking game. I don't know. Yeah. Before your time, son. Back in my day. I guess All so. All right, so we're continuing on with sales. Nintendo Switch has now sold 20 million units worldwide during its lifetime, announced during the latest Nintendo Woo! earnings call. Good for you, Nintendo. Good job. Jeez. Good they, job. Uh, yeah, so they, they've sold more than half of what the Xbox has sold. Hmm. Um. And that's got to be scary for Xbox. Phil Spencer's trying to figure out a way to put his Xbox on a little screen and split it in half right now. <laughs> because Nintendo is killing it. 20 million. Do you got, you've owned a Switch already, right, Heck? I had one, and I told, I think I told you guys I'm getting another one. Like, I'm going to get one back now. I, like, I finally mm-hmm. see games that like, I want now, like um, Octopath. Like that, yeah, 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 that, yeah, that one great. looks like a game that's like my style. I think it's great. That's the game that actually finally pushed me to get it. I mean, there's other good games that are there. Um, also, Smash, you know, Smash is coming out, so like that one, yeah. and that's another reason why I to, to beat you up live, you know, so that <laughs> there's no excuses. <laughs> And I want someone to clip it. Robbie, you're gonna be there to clip it, and we're gonna have oh, that as a I have I have, happily will clip it. We're gonna this have happens. one meme going on the bottom, and it's gonna see your reaction to losing, and it's gonna be playing the whole time during the podcast. <laughs> Just in a loop. In a loop, you're like oh, but like in a loop. I can't it's gonna I be lost. a funny meme. Oh, and like and we can sell it. The great thing is we can sell t shirts for you, Beastly. You can make people if anyone wants to see Beastly's face what after he lost, that? <laughs> like after he lost, and just that's it. And we'll, we'll they'll now, sell like hotcakes. I, <laughs> I know, we'll you know they're thing. bringing everybody back in this Smash, and uh, you know, to me, Melee was the best Smash Brothers because I would wave dash a lot, yeah. you know, uh, and that way it would just fuck up people's timing. And also, I'm an expert at meteor smashing. Uh, I'll teach you all about it. I can't wait. Like, Melee, though, I think the reason why Melee is the best, in my opinion, was the fastest. But now they made the speed the, the same fastest. exact speed as Melee. So it's back to the proper the speed. The switches? Like, the speed is going to be the same? Yes. They said that that's... that. Brawl is slower. They, yeah, they said they brought it up. That's why the, the people that got used to Brawl and, and all that stuff, like it's going to be a different pace. They actually, the timing's different now. So we'll see if it's correct or is one of those selling points that, you know, some... For, you know, people like to say, oh, this game's going to have this. And when you see it, it's really not exactly mm-hmm. the way they explain. Oh, so, yeah. 
So I'm starting to feel like this episode of Beastly Thoughts is like an episode of Black Mirror because every topic is almost the same. Grand Theft Auto V has now sold nearly 100 million units in its entire lifetime, 100? which will make it the only uh, make it only the third game to ever reach this sales milestone. So it's uh, Minecraft. Is it Mario? I think the original Mario? Super Mario Brothers. Yes. And, and is the one. wow, GTA V, one hundred million dollars. I mean sales. Either would be great. One hundred million dollars. It mm. it was planned. Just to let you know, because if you think about it, it was strictly planned because this is when the new generation of console was going to start. But they purposely put it on the old generation to get people to get of sales. They, they made it seem like yeah. they made it seem like it wasn't going to be a another next gen version. They do the all same thing with GTA Six. Yeah, they waited and they put the next gen version there, and all of a sudden, oh, we made hey, this. Hey, yeah, we got this first person mode. But, but I, I gotta say though, man, I remember a couple of years ago when Digital Foundry showed last gen versus current gen yeah. GTA Five videos. I almost shit my pants. I couldn't believe what they had pulled out of the PS4 and the Xbox. Oh, I yeah. couldn't believe it. And getting the first person and, mode and all that it, too. I mean, yeah, I got cool. GTA Five on my PC, yeah. and I'm running a GTX 1060, six gigabyte. Whatever that means, because I'm not a PC guy. Mm -hmm. And I got it on the PS4. I mean, everybody... And I don't even play Grand Theft Auto. To me, the best GTA is like Grand Theft Auto 3 or Vice City or something old. Yeah. Because to me, there was it was all the same kind of game, mm -hmm. similar stories. And I was like, you know, after a certain point, I don't want to watch Godfather again. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I just got into that mind state. But it's something you can do that you can just kill a lot of time and just... Spend hundreds of hours doing nothing, and everybody knows it. I mean, if you're going to have yeah. a game for longevity, it needs to either be The Witcher Three or GTA Five. And GTA Five is probably a better better choice for time. Yeah, well, the online, you know, GTA Online is like what really made this game what it is. People bought it just to play online because, like, and then like they're they're always supporting, it. they're always putting something new in it. You know, when the heist modes came out, like that's something that was that sold so many copies on its own because people were waiting for that. And then when they finally announced it to come out, people bought it. Some people that already bought the game, got rid of it. They bought it back again. Like that, <laughs> you know, that's a thing that happened to anytime these new updates came, some people sold those games back and then bought new ones because Ooh, I of want that. to see the new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So then, yeah, that yeah. jumped into the sales too. You know, there's, there's a lot you, of you, different you, things. You've got to watch though. And this is a true story and it's no joke. I bought the girls GTA 5, uh, Nova's 8, Nina's 5. And, you know, I was kind of amazed just, you know, looking at it on their little flat screen in their room. And At first, I didn't know it was a game because Nina was just standing on the corner. And that's a bad place for your five-year-old to stand anyway. But she was standing on the corner of the game. And, you know, I was like, what are you doing? She was like, I'm just looking at the buildings, Daddy. I was like, oh, that's sweet. I left, and I swear, I came back two minutes later. She was in a strip club. And that's when I took, <laughs> took the game away. <laughs> so, oh, you should have left it with her. So just watch what you do. They gotta, the they gotta learn at some point. You know, GTA can uh, teach them. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, you just don't want to learn those lessons. Not in GTA when you're five. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of more depravity, oh, James Gunn, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy one and two, is unlikely to return after being fri fired by Disney from directing the third film, even after the even after the entire cast. Has stated that he should be reconsidered. Uh, no, he shouldn't. That's my own opinion. I saw the tweets. I saw the tweets this guy was tweeting about raping children and raping little boys. Yeah, it was ass. weird. It was weird. But like, it wasn't one or two. This guy it, tweeted like twenty-five tweets that were. I'm a parent. I have five children. If there was a, a guy who was around some children that I knew of and was tweeting some shit like that. About mm. going up in in five year olds' asses and stuff like that, I, I'd probably be in jail because his jaw would be broken. But he, yeah. I mean, business. What is Disney supposed to do? You know, Disney. They're a family friendly company. Period. They've they've, you know, they've sure. made they've cut their teeth, uh, keeping children, little girls happy, little boys happy, and, and now they're branching off into other avenues and. and <clears throat> soon to be like the most powerful company in the world you know they're like pinky in the brain what do they do I, james gunn was sweeting this stuff out what are they supposed to do? but they hired about, him they, when it, it he made like these tweets strategy. yeah so that's, what? What, that's another thing yep Bobby they said it. he hired them when like he made these tweets when they hired him like years ago 
Like, this yeah. isn't new. So, yeah, well, I think it's a bit silly. Honestly, personally, I, I don't think it's that bad. It's, I think I think it's this, right? Here's, here's the problem, though, right? If you say something like that and, and it's... It's here's the thing. Did they hire it was him? It was stupid. Did they hire him? Yeah. And they knew it's, about it's the more tweets? than stupid. That's fucking sick. If they hired him, they Whatever. knew about the tweets. That's the thing. If they hire him, they knew about the tweets. Because they did, then legally they already knew about the tweets, and they hired him. Then they're firing him after the tweets. Like it, that's that's something. Yeah, after it becomes like do. a big so deal, right? Yeah. That's one thing. Two, if for him, it, it seems like a that was completely wrong. Right? I think that's stupid joke it's like it's not even supposed to be a joke and the way you joke, said it, it's if you say it one time robbie it's different it's like it may be a joke is a sick joke a twisted joke but then when you have history of doing it more than once then it's no longer how much of a joke is it you know no, I mean? like in, no no doubt it's in poor taste like i didn't approve yeah that, but that's what i'm saying like pedophilic jokes are not in poor taste they're yeah. fucking pedophilic jokes but we we as a yeah. people need to have some line that we won't cross I mean, you can make black jokes, white jokes. Yeah, I like watermelons. So what? But I'm not okay, going to talk about. Not, yeah. I'm not going to. I'm not going to make jokes. Or, or sit next to someone making jokes about doing depraved things to the most innocent of, of people on on the planet. That's just a line I won't cross. And and I gotta say, Guardians of the Galaxy two probably behind Thor Ragnarok, my favorite uh, Disney Marvel film. Mm-hmm. So I like the guy's work, but. You know, if if you found out John Wayne Gacy made, you know, he was the best clown, would you still go see him work knowing he had 25 children under his house? No, you would say, I'm not supporting this shit anymore. Sure. And so yeah. you got to cross, you got to have a line. It, it seems sort of like strategic, though, by Disney, in my sense, because it kind of felt like in the beginning. They just don't want their image they, ruined. And now that it's they, being they a big want deal. That's why but, they got rid of him. It's business. It feels like it yeah. was strategically placed where all the, the cast members one by one are saying something. It feels like they're building it up to hire him again. So that's that's what it seems not like they're building up. Uh, they're probably not going to. Oh, there, there's so. another reason. There's another precedent that's already been set by Disney. Roseanne was fired for saying uh, what was considered a racist joke. Yeah. Um, uh, about uh, what's her face? Who used to work in the Obama administration? Said that she looked like an ape. Now the woman, she does. She looks like the ape in the movie, and I'm yeah. black. Maybe but, we should but, just move but, on to a different topic. But no, we can handle this. Okay. But uh, Roseanne's show was uh, it by was owned way, by folks, Disney. We're keeping this. We're keeping this strictly as a conversation. None of us here yeah. believe in this stuff like that. We're just having a conversation, and also because you know Twitch rules like and stuff like that. We don't support any of that stuff if you have any you know racist comments or feel feel like that about people that's not right and we don't support yeah, any that's of that not stuff. Absolutely. That's absolutely. 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 so that's one explain that for case twitch or thank you Hector. any of that stuff thank you comes into the fact that. they know that it's, it's a conversation a no one believes in that and we're not actually saying anything to put anyone down or make anyone feel bad at all so uh, that's it. This is a conversation. Um, everyone has their own opinion. Ravi had one opinion. B said another. But everyone has an opinion, and that's all we're saying. Something real quick, and we'll move on to another topic. It is, you know, questionable topic, but at least it's not a, a topic that we're against. We're having a conversation. Sometimes it's, it's just a discussion. You have yeah. to have a conversation about that. Unfortunately, in, but in closing, in closing, and then we can move on. Yeah. The reason I don't think Disney can is because they already fired Roseanne for saying something that was yeah. considered. Uh, uh, a joke in poor taste. Sure. Yeah. And, and she said a lot less, and they com- they fired her day one, ended her show, and so Disney as a company, it would be really hard for them to, for them to, you know, kind of double back and say, well, you said some things, you said some things, we're going to keep you, we're going to let you go. It would just be a huge uproar because that's how politics work. Yeah. 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 But anyway, the one last thing though about this topic is the fact that as you see, there's people that have different opinions. And people, you know, but the cool thing about video games in general, like, it don't matter where you come from, what you do, like, what you believe in. In the end, we're all gamers and we're here for one Which reason. Which one's and better? Think, Damn right. And I think that's that was an important reason to bring this topic up because, like, it shows that you still have that video game escape. You have a way for everyone that likes the same thing mm-hmm. to get away, to get play together, games, yeah. and just have fun. That's it. Man. All right, what's the next? Also, well Hector, thank you. Spokesman, man, always the fucking. <laughs> thank voice you, Hector, for clearing. <laughs> I love you, Hector. Development on Crackdown Three is very nearly done at this stage, according 
to one of the lead developers of the project. I don't believe it either. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I just don't I'll believe it. I'm gonna finish reading this. Hold on. The 2019 <laughs> release will be used to polish the game from now until its release. Yeah, I agree. They're okay. almost done because Microsoft's gonna cancel. It's gonna get they're canceled. Exactly. <laughs> they're they're almost done production. They're gonna be like they're gonna walk in one day. So you guys just stop. Just drop. Your <laughs> when do they start working done. on this game? I don't know. They're, we they're still drawing pictures of the game. They have to. Because... Yeah, I feel like they're still doing concept art at this stage. Uh, Robbie, you're super good, Robbie, at, at dates. And you, I, I know you probably know the year. What year did they start working on Crackdown? Three. 2013. Are you kidding me? Yeah. No. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is like Duke Nukem. Except Nine Duke years. Nukem. Except apparently Actually, this is coming out. That wasn't horrible. I don't, it had bad reviews, but it wasn't horrible. I did play that game. It wasn't bad, really? It, it wasn't. I actually liked it. The only problem is that it was a game you had to keep in mind. It was supposed to come out at the time it did. When it finally came out, people were judging it as it the day it came out and not where it started. And I think that it's only right to think about because that type of mentality was like a mm -hmm. 90s jokes. You know, he made jokes like... Uh, you know, like John McCain and Die Hard. That's the, the style of jokes he makes, and you have to keep that in mind in that game. I think that's why it got murdered, because they're comparing it to all these new games. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, it wasn't that bad of a game, so. Perfect yeah. analogy for what you just said. I had a big discussion at work yesterday with a guy named Scott. He mm -hmm. said, hey, Beastly, uh, who was the best Batman? He talks like this. Christian Bale or Michael Keaton? And, I, you know... I was born in 1980, and to me, Michael Keaton was a shit. I mean, to me, Tim Burton's world was amazing. And some people, I'm probably in the minority, but I told him Michael Keaton, and then, and then he started to kind of conflate the 90s style of film. Then he brought in, like, Batman mm -hmm. Forever. Then he brought in Batman and Robin and George Clooney's nipples. And I had to stop him and say, Ooh. that's nothing to do with, um, yeah, that's nothing to do with Michael Keaton's Batman, the first two mm -hmm. films were made by Tim Burton, but he said, it was still cheesy. It still had Penguin, and it, nothing seemed like it was serious. Yeah. And you look at this new Batman, everything's serious, everybody dying. You you like that old cheesy stuff, don't you? Yes. I was like, what? It wasn't cheesy when it fucking came out. <laughs> you, it, it was great for its time. It was action-packed. We went to Wendy's mm -hmm. and got the value meal with the big cup that had the Catwoman's fine ass and Penguin on it. It was great. Just to let you guys know, the best looking like Batman, the one that looked ben just Affleck. like Batman, th that looked like Batman, that you could say that's Batman. I'm not saying he's good looking people. I know it sounded like I said the best looking, but I meant the one that looked the best as Batman <laughs> was Ben Affleck. He actually looked like uh, Batman. Perfect example. Like comic book Batman. I told him that yesterday. You and told then Ben Affleck I that? We're close friends. <laughs> you had a conversation talking, with Ben Affleck. I was, talk, I was talking to Scott. And so, I didn't know, you know about I this. Like, I like to stir the pot. So I went around the shop and I talked to the plant manager. I talked to mm -hmm. the floating manager, a bunch of other people, all managers. And they all uh, kind of agreed that Keaton was. But when we had the discussion on who, Affleck, who, days, who embodied him the most, yeah. who was the best looking Batman, who looked the most like Bruce Wayne, because Batman's 6'3". Yeah. And and Ben Affleck's six two, and you know Michael Keaton's like five ten. Ben Affleck's like, like six four, isn't he? Is he that tall? But, yeah, I think he's like six four. Yeah, so he he really <laughs> had the stature of Batman. You're absolutely right. He's the one who, that's Batman when you look at him. Yeah. Now you know the the film, wasn't that great? Yeah, even I liked with the butt chin, he even had a butt chin. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I, wonder if he, I wonder if like when he's eating dinner, he wipes his chin. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is kind of crazy news because, you know, I know people who stream and, and, and people play a lot of different games. Robbie, you stream. This is being streamed right now, just in case you didn't know. It uh, is. You know, mm -hmm. Briar Rabbit, Pope Bear, all these people stream. But a Fortnite streamer, his name is Ninja, has now reached over 10 million followers on I've Twitch. Him before. Being the first channel to ever do so. How many Ten subscribers does he have, though? <laughs> Uh, hundreds of thousands, a lot. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Cause that's what's a big one. That's the these, money, right? That's you the You realize money. this guy, at like he had hundred. If he has hundreds of thousands, he makes two to three dollars per subscriber per month. Oh, jeez. Yep. I'm just letting you know that. I'm that's in the how wrong much he makes. Business, man. Per he month. makes don't, don't over forget. 500 grand a month just off subs. And and don't forget, don't forget though. Is he that good? 
or is his yeah, personality? His personality. I Both. Think. And he's amazing yeah, in the he's game. He's really good, yeah. But, like, don't forget, he's also sponsored by Red Bull now, I believe. Like, Red Bull signed him. So, like, he's with Red Bull. Like, oh, so the money. He is he's rolling. He's pissing energy that. drinks and throwing money. That's he, just He's crazy. got unbelievably amounts of money. Like, just so much. <laughs> like, yeah. He pees in the toilet. That energy makes the toilet flush by itself. Basically, like, in, like, two months. All he's doing is Red Bull. In, like, two months, you could like, reach a million dollars in just subscribers. Like, not even including the tips he gets. Like, just subscriber money. In two months, you make a million dollars. Like, six months. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's insane. A year. It's, like, it's pretty bad, man. That's just that no. without sponsorship <laughs> would you, and everything would you, else. Would you retire in five years? Five years and you're out? I mean, in a job like that, like, you don't have to retire eventually. I mean... Eventually, the game's going to die, right? Eventually, the game's going to die. But the way people like the game so much, this game may die. They might have like a Fortnite 2 or a Fortnite update. Oh, they're going to have a Fortnite 2. You know what I mean? It's going to be like a game that's going to be – they're going to put money into it for a while. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. So as long as they do it, everyone's going to look to him to introduce the new game. I'm sure whenever they have a new update or something else or they're having people test it, He's going to be the one that's going to introduce it. So he's going to get paid for that, too. So money's going to come his way for a while. So, oh, yeah. yeah. He's got so, he, the, with the money he makes, like, he can just put away for retirement so much and just be good for his yeah. life. Like, when you make that much money, yeah. Do you guys think it's, it's, it's a feasible thought to think that maybe Fortnite 2 won't be free to play? Yeah, they make mm. cake free to play. Like they make their money in free to play because there's yeah. so many people. If their business model works, why would things. they change it too? Like, yeah, I don't see them doing that. And Jeez. Amazon won't let that happen. Like Amazon work, it keeps partnering with Epic and stuff like that. Amazon, like you know, Amazon did the. They had like a, a deal with them, like with a bunch of different things. Really? And rumor, rumor has it. Oh, by you the mean way, Twitch Prime and all that stuff? Is that what yeah, you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Twitch Prime. They constantly mm-hmm. have it because Amazon, the Twitch and stuff. Yeah. So. They have their partnerships with them. But another thing that rumor has it, the Note 9 is releasing soon, right? The rumor has it the Note 9 is going to be exclusive. They're going to have Fortnite exclusivity for a while, for like a little per- a period of time because you know it's on Android yet. It, mm-hmm. That's going to be interesting to see too because it's going to be the weird. only phone that's going to have wow. Fortnite on it for a little while. Mm-hmm. That's what rumor has. It, so. Jeez. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. And if you guys hear that, I don't know how. Whenever I do a podcast... My neighbor hops on the riding mower. I can hear it. <laughs> yes, I and I apologize to all who are listening. This is exciting news Only because bit. I've contributed, my wife has contributed mm-hmm. to these statistics. Destiny 2 players have now spent approximately 25 years deleting over 800 million shaders since the game's launch. Bungie announced that players have now deleted 807,635,000 124 shaders to the, to date. <laughs> what a great statistic for that game. <laughs> Just old man. Jeez. Yeah. Well, that's all on console because no one's really playing on PC. Well, excuse me. Question. Question sorry, for sorry. Destiny. Beastly. How many concurrent players do you think is on Destiny right now? Oh, there's a there's a lot. I mean, I, I don't know what the statistics are, but cuz like I know you don't really see people stream it that much like it's not if you look at streaming top games like you don't even see people streaming the game but I, I thought when i looked at that yesterday i thought destiny 2 was on there it is but it's usually pretty low to be honest it's in like between really expansions low too yeah it's surprisingly low for that game that's why i meant like so that's why like how many if people aren't even streaming it, it means less people are watching it it's which popular means that, again because the new update just came out but generally yeah. it's coming yeah yeah that's why i'm like are do you think they have concurrent of over, let's say, 5 million? Probably not, right? Definitely, it has uh, definitely not. Maybe 2 million? Like, how many people do you think are actually playing that game? Do you right even now, think Destiny there's a is number 19 with 7,213 viewers. 803 channels are streaming right now. That's not too bad. But yeah, again, like that new update. Just Fortnite has 12,000 channels, so... That's what I'm saying. Like, if you look at that, and that's like a with the new update... Yeah. It's like it's not that high at all. So that's why I'm curious how many people are playing concurrently. Because I know it's just, you know, mm-hmm. I think it's just maybe mm-hmm. the 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 hardcore people, and that's it. Like hardcore people that are sitting there deleting shaders, you know. No, 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 no. 
mean, how many fucking That's all they're doing in the you? game. Can't believe you talk about shaders, man. Of all things, you, I want to see. That's the thing I'm worried about. They, they don't talk about numbers of how many people are playing. They're talking about <laughs> talking shaders. About how many people have deleted shaders in our game. I think it people makes it sound like a large. That's so. why I brought it up. It makes it sound like it's a large people playing it by by bringing up big numbers like that instead of actually naming or mentioning how many people. Because like in the beginning, we we're talking about all these people that bought like GTA Five and like mm. all these things sold, but then they come out and announce shaders. Yeah. That's why I was like a little worried about. It. I'm like I'm curious some to see how. Some of them they... are nice. Yeah. Some of them Those are shaders nice. are nice. Some. <laughs> most of them kind of <laughs> suck. No. <laughs> I mean, most of them do, but some of them make you look like a metallic, rose color, rose gold, oh, sexy ass warlock. She is pretty sexy too. Fortnite. Thanks for that, Beastly. Will not okay. be a... <laughs> Fortnite. Fortnite will not be available on the Google Play Store. When the game arrives for Android, instead it will be available to download only through Epic Games' website. Fortnite has also crossed over 100 million downloads on mobile. 100 million downloads on I- on iOS, that's pretty fucking phenomenal. That's nuts. And I'm surprised that there's no news of Apple hitting the $1 trillion mark yesterday uh, with, their, with their stocks. Oh, totally first, forgot about that. First, United, yeah. first mm-hmm. U.S. company to ever hit that. Uh, and just it's crazy how they took over the tech sector. Coming from, you know, doing the i i, what was it, the iPad? No, what was it called? The little you listen to MP3s on it. IPod. iPod. Yeah. IPod. Yeah. And then they 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 dove into the phone arena, which no one would have said, you know, this is you're going to become the biggest in the world. You know, back then you got Nokia, you got Motorola, mm-hmm. you got everybody trying their hand and doing it better for years, and then all of a sudden Steve Jobs changes the world. Now his company. Valued at over a trillion dollars. Yeah, here's the quiz. They changed the smartphone industry. You guys know number two? Uh, I do it every now and then. I always use air freshener. What are you talking about? (laughs) The number two company. Which is the number two company? Beastly's apparently very familiar with the number two. (laughs) Okay, number two, there's three. He does it every day. They're all big companies that (laughs) we all know. One, two. One, two. (laughs) Number two. It is number Amazon. Let me guess. Oh, really? That is right in the hundreds. Jeff Bezos, I'm, I'm, I'm but not then surprised. they surpass, Amazon surpass Microsoft, and Google? they surpass um, Google, which I'm just like, wow. And think about how Amazon has not been there as long as these companies, and Amazon will pass Apple, they're predicting, at mm-hmm. some point, because they're at 900 million right now. And that's why I'm like, that's insane. When I found out, I'm like, they're at 900 million already? Because, yeah. like, like, Jeez. well, they, they bought up everything. They, no, they not 900, up, sorry, 900 billion, not 900 million. But they, like, they bought up everything. They own everything. I mean, they, what, what Twitch? They own Whole Foods. Yeah. You know, they I just, mean, they own Amazon. I just had a coffee maker delivered today. They touch yeah. our lives in so many ways. It's just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. I'm they surprised that you guys didn't even, yeah. you didn't bring up, uh, Facebook, they lost $130 billion. Yeah, yeah their stock's in, going in down. In two hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the largest insane. drop for any company ever. Yeah. In history. $130 billion in two hours. Uh, at what point does someone say, uh, I think something's wrong? So, I you think know? we're on fire in the back room. Can someone go check? <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, mean, a fire I can only imagine out. Zuckerberg yeah. sitting in his office somewhere just. Oh, shit. Basically, can like, you show you know, off your uh, shirt again for DJ? Sure, in the chat? DJ. Beastly Thoughts live shirt. Yes, there is now, DJ. There is. Right there, baby. There you go. And that's us. Hector's up front with his nice hairdo. I mean, yeah. true. I, I didn't do my hair today. But, keep it know. fresh. But it's always fresh on the image. Yeah, <laughs> yeah looking it's, good. It's a great, looking it's good. a great, great shirt. Hit me up uh, on on Twitter if you like. If you're interested in purchasing one of these lovely babies, let me know. Super cool. Awesome. Awesome news. Uh, yeah, and that's that was the Fortnite news. <laughs> totally talked about Fortnite the whole time. <laughs> Didn't talk about Fortnite. But yeah, I mean, when, when you look at it, 100 million downloads on iOS alone, them having a deal where you can't download it through the Google Play Store, and Epic, uh, this game is, is bigger than, it, it's more than just DJ me. says, three men's faces on my chest? Yes, please. That's what I like to yeah. hear. That's what we like to hear. And, and, yeah. and all our asses are on the back of the shirt. It's crazy. Yeah. So it's even more worth the price of the edition now. We had a ton of news today. And it went by in one hour. 
So Ooh. for the next hour, Robbie's going to yodel for us. He's been telling me how how good he's gotten at this. You know, I can't do it as good as you, Robbie, but wait till I get done with the last little bit of news. Okay, Robbie? Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Doom Eternal will launch sometime in, 20, sometime in 2019. The gameplay reveal of the game will happen next week during QuakeCon. Fuck yeah. I'm excited about it. Um, I'm going to buy it on my PS4. I'll, I'll get it on PC. Am I, I am I expecting it to be anything better? How the heck would you better? not go on PC for that game? I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to have that on PC. There's nothing like it. Because Doom is definitely the best on PC. I'm getting it on the Switch, too, um, because it'll only be 30 frames, but I could take it anywhere I want. And that's something you can't do. I mean, imagine grabbing your PC and walking outside looking for a plug. I got Doom on this bitch. Well, on the <laughs> Switch, you can just play it. Uh, so you I'm have super excited about laptops. That. No. You know I went down that road. <laughs> you know I went down that fucking road, okay, Hector? Don't do that to me. Okay? Whoa. The old Beastly Thoughts crew knew I was the See, I thought you were talking about an actual laptop, BC. I'm like, oh, he means a desktop. Like, that's all like, he's like, you gotta, you gotta take out take the, the, the PC outside. Like, <laughs> like, what? Yeah, well, I'm talking about, yeah. My 960M in, in, in the den in there. Sure, you're nice. old sure laptop you that I tried to play video games on, and it just didn't work. Be sleep, okay. That was a cute mess up. You're good. You're okay now. Okay. <laughs> it makes you feel really... But yeah, man, uh, I'm not expecting to see anything like earth shatteringly new because I think that uh, Bethesda and I think they kind of broke the earth when this game was revealed. And I think that if Doom 1 was to come out right now and we had never seen it, Everybody would be talking about it. I think that the, the fervor, the excitement would be the exact same today as it was in 2016 when that game was, was revealed and launched. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it still runs better than virtually any first-person shooter. It's so fluid. The music, everything is so awesome. So as long as they stick to the formula for me, just keep it the same, you know? Oh, yeah. Keep the just same, refine it. Make know, it even better. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's all we need. Doom was and still is one of the best shooters i played in probably the last... 20 years it's just and the original doom was the 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 first first person shooter i ever played and that kind of introduced me to the world of first person games oh, yeah. and so to me it only made sense that uh doom was as good as it was i'm super excited about it i can't wait to see what it's going to be all about um but yeah i'll probably end up getting it on a couple of different avenues i have it on ps4 because i game share with kate on my switch so i can take it wherever, wherever i want mm. and on the pc like when i want to feel like an elitist schlub mm. Play 100, you know, 40 hertz, 44 Dude, hertz. Yeah. The first time I played, I had a LAN party, like, for actually play people like that. Like, Doom was the first experience I had of that, which was awesome, you know? Like, that, I thought Doom started it all for first-person shooters, you know? That's that's where it really started, you know? And I, I'm excited about this Doom. I think with how, like you said, how fluid it was, the first one, Beastly, this one, it's now we know that it's going to run good. Like, so now we're just worried about, like, the actual game. What can they do differently? How extreme is it going to get? Is there going to be, you know, how hard could it get? Because that's the thing people like, the difficulty to see how crazy it'll be. And how, oh, yeah, they yeah beat it, it ramped up with you. The game yeah. actually had a, a difficulty curve that changed with your, you know, with your handicap. So if you were super good, mm -hmm. the enemies became more aggressive. They moved around faster. They worked, you know, well together. I'm just really surprised, though, uh, because I expected, I totally expected uh, at Bethesda's E3 conference, it just to be Doom 2. Mm -hmm. Because Doom was just a re remake, a reboot of the series. And initially Doom and then Doom 2 came out. Right. And so I'm, I was expecting Doom 2, you know, for them to... If, expecting for them to, uh, you know, kind of go the direction of the original rather than go all eternal. I don't know what that means. Maybe this is kind of uh, an iteration on the franchise before they come out with 2. Maybe they're working on an even more refined engine for the game, but uh, whatever they do with this is going to be amazing. And the engine runs on everything. You guys have, have you guys seen Doom even on the Switch? The, even the friggin' Switch, yeah, that's what I was going to say. They got the engine. I mean, it, running. it runs at 30 frames, but I mean, you can tell. Like if you play a 60 frames Doom and you play the Switch version, that yeah, it's not the same, mm -hmm. but it's still fast. It's still super buttery smooth. <clears throat> Who knows? They have more time to work on this one, so it might be even better for the Switch this time around. Cause they might be able to tweak what it was needed to, to make it because it did have some dips in 30 frames they, they might be able to do sure certain did. things now because now they have more time and it's they they're like okay this is how the switch yeah. works this now oh, we yeah. can do this you know and, and, and now and who, like, they Wolfenstein know people will buy too. it that's why 
Was they, they, they sure will. Wolfenstein 2 was graphically far superior to Doom. And uh, that game is another 30 frames per second offering on the Switch. Yeah. And to me, the, the fact they're even able to get that to run on the Switch, you know, because I have it on PC. And, you know, mm. playing that game on PC, you know, unlocked frame rate, just insane. Yeah, it feels they, so good. I, I haven't bought yeah, haven't even bought it on the Switch, but I, I think that Doom should have no problem on the Switch in the future because even, I mean, Doom Eternal, who knows, but is it going to look as good as Wolfenstein 2? I mean, that's going to be really a hard, you know, a hard nail to hit yeah. down. So. I mean, and it'll be interesting, too, if Nintendo, like, plans on doing any sort of upgraded Switch as well, what things will look like on that. I'm, I, they probably, Ooh. they might. I think it's definitely possible. Or if they do, like, a dock that makes it more powerful or something. Yeah, that, I mean, there was a yeah. lot of uh, speculation of them not, not using the Tegra X chip, but mm. actually, actually using, what, the Tegra, was the Tegra 11? Or it was no, it's like the X2 because it was just about to come out or something. Yeah, like the yeah, newer I mean, version. Yeah, and it, it was actually kind of available during the time that they were, you know, doing all the, the Switch uh, news. So who knows, man? They could. And imagine that, having something, the power of a PS4 in the palm of your hands. Yeah. You know, even knows, having something, dude. the power of an Xbox One in the palm of your hands. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe excited. Sony might invest in another console, uh, another handheld. You think that's possible? I don't know. That, that's what rumors had it for a while, right? That that Sony's that's what they're gonna announce. They're gonna have another one that comes out. There, Look, there was something not that long ago. I think it I was think about Sony. I, my heart's filled with pain. Yeah. Pain because I, you know, this is cases. Is Correct mine. me if I'm wrong, though. I feel like not that long ago, the CEO of PlayStation or someone there said something about like another. PlayStation handheld is possible. Like they're not totally yeah. counting it out. I, really? I feel said like that. they yeah. said that. Yeah. So the they, only, if you think about it, the only thing they screwed up with the Vita, right, was the way it looked with the bubbles. No one liked that. And also, yeah. the most important thing, the memory. You know, the memory, no, the, how much all. it costs. They didn't, they didn't support the, the console. Well, they didn't they have didn't, any first parties working on games. I mean, they didn't those support are the it because, important. yeah, but they didn't support it because no one was buying. No one was buying it because they saw how much it was cost to the, get all the parts. And that's why people stopped buying. And once you see that, because they did have some people in the beginning, they had certain games. And then people like, screw it, I'm not making games because no one's buying it. That's well, the, the reason the why. The games they, that they made, when people saw it, like they made uh, they made a Resistance game, they made Black Ops Declassified. Yeah. Oof, and these were like good, the shittiest games ever. I mean, yeah. of course Uncharted Golden Abyss was amazing. That was right? a great game. Because yeah, really I got that with this on the, you know, I got this a week before it actually launched at Best Buy. Paid a little extra money for the early edition Me too. bundle. I actually I'm got that one too. I'm a fucking camp. You know, I think I'm doing it. I'm like, oh my god, this is just like PlayStation 3. This is unbelievable. And that was like the last super awesome game I played But that's what I'm saying. They yeah. started with that. So they had it. But then when people were not buying it, and it's their fault because they killed it themselves. They shot someone on the foot when they had that memory. We had to pay a fortune for something. And you couldn't use your own memory. Like the Switch, right now, you can use your own memory card. You don't have to get the Switch I brand memory card. I can use my own card. memory on my, on my Vita. Yeah, that's, um, well, because... I mean, you have to root it. You know, well, you have to hack it to do that. Yeah, I, it's called uh, H in H in core, and yeah. um, I uh, installed it on mine. Um, I want to say two weeks ago. See, it's, it's booting up now. Yeah. And uh, let me see. I'll install. I'll show you guys what you can do. There's so many damn things you can do with this thing after you root it, and now mm -hmm. you can root up to 3.68, which is really awesome. But yeah, they they sell these ten dollar adapters for the Vita, yeah. and I. And what you do is you just put your regular memory stick into that adapter. And after you um, allow it in these settings here, let me see. Once it pops up, I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's like the more you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I Yeah, yeah the Vita definitely got off see to a really hit, strong see start. The but... settings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those settings, like when you click on them. Hinkaku, is that another word for hentai? I don't know what your freaky shit you're into, Robbie. I don't know if you guys do it again. <laughs> it sounds like but this, When you open up these settings, it allows you to do all kinds of stuff. Like you can uh, detether yeah. a memory stick from a from a uh, Vita and use it on another one. You can uh, allow the Vita to use uh, the mods for the mm -hmm. memory card. So you can like put a regular yeah. micro in there. Yeah. You can do spoofing and all that stuff. So now this is the new PSP. Yeah. Because that's really the only value it has. Putting yeah. PlayStation 1 stuff on here, putting old Nintendo stuff on here, and just having fun. And the sad really thing no about the Vita, too, is that 
Beastly. I got it at launch too. Like I actually think it launched super well. You got well. the early edition bundle too? I did. Yeah, I pre-ordered it. Oh, it came man. out like a week wow. early. And yeah. like again, like the Vita launched really good. Like it had some really good games that launched, like Wipeout and uh yeah, like Uncharted and like a bunch you of other a stuff. Fucking lanyard on. They gave me they, a Best Buy. It launched so, so well, and then it just didn't keep up. Yeah, no! it just they, fell but off they the killed the themselves, especially with the, the let's say the pricing was weird. Then you also had the the consoles that they had. They partnered AT and T for like the the three G one. That like was there's weird. so many. I that remember move. that. Yeah, yeah they, they, there's so many things oh, yeah. that they destroyed with the announcement. Like <laughs> yeah, that it's was like strange. they butchered the launch. The device itself was really good. And the tech, the, the quality of it was really good. The games mm-hmm. looked really good when they actually made the games for it. The problem was the way that they did. That's what I'm saying. If they had another chance in it now, it may be too late. But I'm saying the Man, way, it is too like, late for this. yeah. But I'm saying like yeah. if they had an opportunity to, if someone actually sold that system better, the way they announced it, the way they did things, it was the way their moves went to to sell it is what killed them. It wasn't the device itself, which is kind of weird that like. It's not weird, but like that's what Xbox One did to themselves right now. It wasn't the yeah, device; mm-hmm. it was the way they sold it to people and the way they they described them what they were they're doing. It really killed the Xbox One. The same yeah. thing with the Vita, I think. So. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, look, the technology exists now. I got so many handhelds around me. Uh, this exists. You know, Sony has, you know, looked at this thing. That's got to be why they're reconsidering now. a handheld too, is because the Switch. And, But can you imagine, though, even if they made something that wasn't the same as the Switch, something you couldn't take controllers off, or maybe it it didn't have all the functionality, PlayStation has a catalog that people would pay money for just to play on the go. Who wouldn't want to play a a real Uncharted, play The Last of Us, play Bloodborne, play this stuff like on a plane? You know, think about Neo, think about all these great games, Detroit Become Human, play those kind of experiences on the go. Yeah, The technology exists. I mean, so you might be right, heck. They might be uh, considering doing it again. I mean, this right here, it breaks my heart. And I'm not, you know, I'm not Gary Diaz. I'm not in love with the Vita, but I was for a time. Yeah. And then when I realized that she just wasn't giving it up, I had to go look for a new chick. Yeah. And same with me. You know I really saying? liked the Vita at first, but it just, then there was just nothing to play on it. Guys, don't forget, though, like they had. The, the, how nice the quality was they had oled screen you know like there wasn't too many devices that had OLED to begin that. with yeah so like cool. they, they had to switch it to lcd because or because of the fact that like we got to switch these to sell them better to make it cheaper that's why they're so expensive they didn't realize that the cost was too high compared to Back the quality of it, you know? oh yeah. god the the hell is that for? they did for the vita jesus i mean even What's the the NFC buying, stuff, like it's buying just, a, a protector for why. your system where the back is like this. They force people to use that touch in games, and when they force them to use it, that's when people didn't want to develop for it because Uncharted had those buttons in it. They had yeah. things you got those to use. Doors, yeah, 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 absolutely. And that's right. why I'm like, they force people to use it, and I think that's another thing that killed them. You know, it I mean, they had some right. good ideas. You know, like um, Killzone Mercenary and Uncharted. They use the gyroscope to aim. Like when you pull out your gun, you can actually go like this and it'll articulate your hand. You can actually get better shots than you would with a traditional controller because you're using your entire hand. Yeah, so you maybe. pull it out. You know, those kind of things were really cool, but I think that they just had too many gimmicks with the system. Yeah. And and not a, not enough yeah. real talent, you know, behind it pushing out things that people really wanted. Pretty much. I mean, just think about it. Everything I'm saying, all the, 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 uh, the first party exclusives, or the first party games that, that exist in PlayStation's ecosystem. None of them really ever came to this thing. No, very few. And they completely botched it. All those games it just were left on the table. You know, I would have paid good money to play some of my favorite games on the go. I mean, they got friggin' Call of Duty and the Vita, but they messed that up. Like, they just didn't do it properly. Oh, uh, don't it, say it. That game no. is the guys, worst. Do you guys see, like, a trend here? Um, let's see. The Wii, the Wii U, the Vita the xbox one all these has something that they force you to use and then eventually <laughs> so the developers stop developing 
it. Remember, yeah. so we had the Wii with all the, the and Wii U, the motion controls. The people eventually stopped. People didn't want to make games for it because they had to make a separate game for them. Right. Uh, the Vita, the same thing. They forced to use this touch and all these other things that people didn't want to develop for it, so they stopped making games for it. Then you have the Xbox One. The Kinect. Oh, the Kinect, the Kinect, the Kinect. And they forced you to use it, and then what happened? No one wanted to develop games for it. And if they did, mm-hmm. they, they developed a separate game for oh, them, yeah. and it's just different. And it's just funny because I don't know how, as a company, you have not put the clues together where you had so many chances to see in the past how yeah. everyone has failed Absolutely every single right. time they force you to totally. do something. Totally, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder who's going to be the next company to try to force people to do some shit. Maybe they probably. Yeah, it's probably so. Yeah, so oh yeah. We're talking right now. They're they're taking notes. Of like shit. Maybe yeah. Maybe you guys should stop the launch of the new uh, PS Vita two. All right. We gotta stop it. Just stop it. Like they're gonna do like the 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 snap ons. No, there's gonna be magnetized. It's gonna it's gonna go like this. It's gonna be magnetized. You let it go and it snaps on by itself. It, yeah, that's it. They're gonna do something. They're gonna be. They'll be the ones to screw up next. I believe it. Last poll. Straw poll. Between you guys only, what are the chances? What do you think? What are the chances of Sony ever doing this, releasing another portable? Fifty-fifty, maybe. That it could go either way. way. I feel like I say fifty-fifty too, because yeah. the problem is, right? They're they're already investing in VR. So, can they afford to invest in VR to something that may fail? And also invest in the handheld, something that may fail? I don't think they could do that. Two yeah. things. VR are- to me is more likely to fail. VR, you think? I think VR is picking up. I think I it, mean, as soon as they get the price range there, they're, they're starting. It's you're still starting so to see expensive, more, though. You're still, yeah, you're still you're starting to see more games that people are starting to understand what they use VR for, and I think that mm-hmm. that's what's going on. Like those horror games are perfect for VR. Yeah, but I mean, look, I I own um uh, and what is it? It's, it's not Insidious. It's oh. like I'm trying to think of the name of that VR game I bought. Full price. You're in a house. It's haunted. Controls are horrible. PSVR. To me, the last great game I played on VR was Resident Evil 7. And yeah. every time I see something on sale, I buy it on mm-hmm. PSVR because I like to add to my library. But when I get into it, it's like another bland, short demo style experience, 20 minutes. Right. Um, and it's just not a real ge- I want a real game. Resident Evil 7 was a real game. Uh, and there hasn't been Skyrim. any... Skyrim. Which one? Skyrim. I don't have Skyrim VR. But I was saying, like, they, they're starting to realize you can do big games. It's the style of game that you have to do. They have to understand that you can't be doing yeah. first-person shooters. So about to, it's something with too much movement where you, you can't really control the fast-paced environment. gets you sick. gets you nauseous. Yeah, you That's will. something you can't handle it yet. You know what I mean? Because the, yeah. the PlayStation isn't powerful enough to do fast motion like that. But you have certain games, like Resident Evil, where you have to take your time and creep your, your way through things. Same thing as Skyrim where you could wander around and stuff. Like, those are the type of games that work because you don't get dizzy and, like, it, the rendering, the way the game loads, mm-hmm. it actually works for the quality and the resolution you have in the mask. And I think that's what they're starting to realize now. And if they could get those type of games out, then they'll start, it'll start to work. And I think people will start to buy more because at the same time, the pricing is going down. They're going to have to... Would you guys yeah. ever consider PSVR? No, I, or would you? I are you just more enough out there for it, for me. You, I've had it at one point. Yeah, yeah, I had it for a little bit. And I, I know, I know, I know you. Like as soon as you yeah. see something you don't like, you're like, yeah, I don't want this shit anymore. <laughs> Maybe if something I, great comes out for it, I'll get it later. Yeah, I do that because like the stock. You don't like to waste your damn money. I like to sell it. I like to sell it, get it my money back, or and you know get close to my money back and then get it back later at a different time when it's worth it so mm-hmm. i do that like all the time this conversation is happening for a reason after the show i'm going to the liquor store something i don't do often but i'm going to go buy some bourbon and i'm looking my, my daughter ellie she turned on my playstation move controller today and i didn't know what it was i just saw a blue ball in her hand i'm like don't swallow that and then <laughs> i kind of find out it's a damn Whoa. move controller and i'm looking at um blue balls damn it uh <laughs> And then oh I look at, um, it, I just, it just caught up for me. I look at my, my PSVR, and I'm like, it's something I haven't played in months. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should just, you know, sip on a little bit of bourbon and submerge myself because I have at least six or seven games I haven't played. 
I, I just had bourbon like, last night, by the way, just to let you know. I was at a rooftop, rooftop club. You know, I was there, a rooftop bar. I had a, some bourbon. Bourbon on the rocks. You're always so ahead of me, heck. Even on our own shirts. Just letting you know, man. Just letting you know, man. And I had Knob Creek. I don't have that too often, which is a little different. But I had some Knob Creek on the rocks. Just letting you know. Ah, okay. I think I'm going to have some Jim, some Jim Beam because I don't, I'm not a drinker. So hmm. it's like the only I'm, name that I know. So... Hey, we're not promoting drinking unless you're 21 or over. We're just having a conversation about alcohol. <laughs> yeah. And we're not sponsored we by Knob Creek unless Knob Creek's listening and they want to sponsor <laughs> they want to do it. Hey, <laughs> yeah, we're totally open to it. <laughs> My yeah. favorite. I mean, you could pay us at just Knob Creek. I mean, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> uh, and I'll say this again. Uh, I made this, guys, because I, I really love what we do. I love you guys, and I love the viewers. You know, you guys watching and experiencing Beastly Thoughts with us. It's something that's so important. This show had died, and I know it stayed alive uh, in my heart for the last over the last year. And uh, bringing our the original crew together, we founded this show. Uh, it just meant so much to me that, that after all this time, we were all immediately down to yeah. get back together and do what made us feel good for years. And uh, so, if anybody's interested in maybe supporting the show and would like to purchase maybe a Beastly Thoughts. T-shirt or a Beastly Thoughts mug or a Beastly Thoughts mouse pad, hit me up on Twitter at Beastly Gamer Max. Let me know what you're looking for. I'll send you some images and get you some quotes. Hell yeah. And also, if you guys want to support us in general, tell your friends, tell people, you know, about the show. They're interested in games or anything like that. If they have any topics that they want to hear on the show, definitely let us know too. Um, that's Absolutely. something that we could, we're going to well, start doing more of, I guess, to, let, to see what you guys want to listen would to. Be dope as, yeah, well, as well. Well, well, check it out, right? Uh, a show I used to do called Revolver Live no longer exists. Mm -hmm. Everyone's alive and well, but the show is dead. Oh. Uh, and, and we, yeah. <laughs> and so. Just the way uh, you said yeah, it. We had some really great ideas on that show, and some of them could migrate to, to here. I would love to hear our viewers' thoughts. If you guys have questions, uh, just stay tuned on Twitter. We got to iron out all our details and get all our contact information together. Uh, and that way you guys can contact us, leave information, leave feedback. Let us know what you guys think we should do, changes that can be made, things that we can do better. Because like you, like everybody else out there, we're trying to improve ourselves and give you guys the best content that, that we can here on this platform. Well said. Thank you all. Thank also, you all so also, one one thing that will be pretty cool. I would like to see if you guys have any challenges or anything, gaming challenges for us to do. Maybe we compete against each other or something. Please Hopefully. let us know as well. Because and I'll I stream it live on Twitch, baby. That will spice baby. things up. That even if it's an uh, individual challenge that we all have to do something, live stream at once, whatever it may be, that would be cool too. So you have a challenge. Just don't bring up a see. fighting game because Hector will lose in all of them. Oh, uh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. them all. He'll <laughs> lose them all. Uh, <laughs> let us know the He'll lose in that. He'll lose in Mortal Kombat. He'll lose in Tekken. Let us know uh, all your fighting game challenges. He'll lose in Soul Calibur. Oh, uh, my gosh, man. <laughs> all you got to do is load it up, heck. All oh, you got to do is load man, it up, dude. Dude. Man. That's fine. Look, all I got to say is that there's no excuses, basically. Even though I don't like to play <laughs> fighting games online because the, the like. combo situation is a little bit different, but I'll still beat you with and no hey, combos. I could kill us. You know, anytime <laughs> we're all playing together as well. You know, I will be streaming that for sure, whether it's a yeah. challenge or whether it's just, you know, us playing together, having fun. Yeah, yeah. man. Going to be good. Beastly Thoughts plays. Big things Beastly coming. Thing. Be ready, boys. That's why I tell my wife every single night. Big things okay. are coming, honey. Yeah. She knows it. I'm waiting for a new graphics card, fellas. I'm going to I'm gonna trade out my I 1080. Know. Where's the 1180? 1180. Where's the 1180? I'm getting 1180 as soon as it comes out. Oh, my God. Right. But here's, just, a, here's a funny thing. That's awesome. Do you really think I should get rid of a 1080 Ti for 1180? I mean, why? I mean, what, do you need it? Like, what are the benefits? Oh, is, do I need eleven? Do I even need a ten ATI? Probably not. You know what I mean? Do I like it? Absolutely. <laughs> do I like, like it? You know it's I mean? pretty nice, though. I don't need it. <laughs> do I need, do, do I need a glass of bourbon? You know what I mean? No. No, but it's nice. <laughs> but it's nice. You know what I mean? It's nice when it has ice in it. You know what I mean? Like. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, so I mean, if I were to invest. I know that, you know, because of the whole um, online mining of uh, G GPUs, like, they're super expensive. 
like even buying the, the they're teams. dropping now by the way because yeah. there's a 10 there's a 1080 not 1080 but 1080 that dropped down as a 470 yesterday i still think it's on amazon for 470 mm. so that's a that 1080 is pretty damn good car for people and that's it for oh, yeah. 470 i mean is, is my is my uh 1060 is it is it useless now it's not useless. Not what all. you no. what do you have with it? For example, like what's your your CPU? Are you on? Or let's put your. How your can motherboard. I find this out? Do you, do you have a DDR three or you're a DDR four now? Four DDR four. You're a DDR four now. Sixteen okay. gigs of DDR four. That's plenty. Okay, so then that that's plenty. That's right there. Then your 1060 is. It's six good. gigabytes. Well, what's your what's your CPU now? Do you know like the CPU number? Like what it is? Is it at least is it i three i five i seven? I think it's an i7. He sent me. Oh, I can look right now. Yeah. You guys, uh, Robbie, why are you not doing the yodeling? <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, I don't know. I was supposed to yodel. That's the thing. Like you, you sort of want to. At this point, I, I'm getting. Cut I'm gonna upgrade my, my CPU Cut that as well. Shit out. <laughs> that, that's a, That's the next thing I'm gonna do. Is I don't want to yodel, damn so. <laughs> I'm too embarrassed. I'm shy. Oh, yo, just man. let the viewers out there know that that's the one thing at the watch for. Everyone's trying to get the best graphics cards, but if you don't, your CPU isn't that good either, no matter how great your graphics card is, oh, your 100%. CPU might be a bottleneck. Make sure the rest of your PC specs match up and don't hold yeah, anything back. It's, it'll okay, be a bottleneck, here. and then it drops down with yeah. certain things. So Okay, I, I didn't hear anything because you know, I was listening to Robbie's yodel in my mind. <laughs> this is what I bought initially, and I upgraded to uh, mm-hmm. a 4 terabyte hard drive. Um to go with my SSD. So I got a Samsung 250 gig uh, SSD, nice. NVIDIA GTX 1060, six gigabyte, um, AMD 1600, 16 gigs, DDR4 RAM, Corsair 650 watt power supply, okay. and ASUS motherboard. What does it mean? It's a lot of letters. ASUS motherboard, is it uh, 1197? Or I, 11... di- I died nine. <laughs> no, well, yeah, I mean, that, that sounds good oh, and stuff like that. You. And you said, well, how many watts is your... Uh... 650-watt power supply. Because you're like the bare minimum, right? So meaning that... Thanks for letting me know, it, guy. Yeah, I meant like meaning that you don't have as much room to upgrade parts. So if you go with a 1080 Ti, then like you're still kind of close. Like with the wattage, you yeah. that's the with how close it is with what you have the parts-wise in there. What's, what's what, the you, best wattage to have? Like maybe 800? Well, like yeah, eight hundred seven fifty eight hundred is is really good for a lot that's, of them. If that's you have quite a good if you have support. AMD, if you have an AMD, then like you're like AMD pulls more power for your graphics card and stuff. So they they pull they get hotter and they pull more power. Good point. So you're gonna especially the be, RX Vegas. I've heard they pull way yeah. more power than like the 1080, so, 1070 stuff like that too. Like, as well. I have overkill. Like I have a thousand watt like platinum. Oh my god! So I have a thousand. I have a Corsair like platinum thousand watt, which is like way That's overkill. But I did that so I could. Supply. Well, there's a the thing though. I had at the time I was running two 1080 Ti's. and I also have them liquid cooled. So like that's the thing. Like so everything that's running in there takes some some juice. But now I'm only running one yeah. single car because the 1080 Ti. Does not like supported at that all. That is nuts. Dual. Oh my god! But, Liquid cooled dual 1080 Ti's. I mean, like that's top of the line. That is. But balling. it doesn't work in games. And you know, I mean, games is only running one. Like yeah. it actually runs better with one 1080 Ti than it did with two. That's yeah. why I sold the other one. So you don't think dual GPUs the... is a good idea? Because I've actually thought about doing that. Not anymore. Okay. Not unless unless you have a lower one. Like if you have in the 1080, like 1080 Ti's, there's, there's no point of it anymore because it seems like less and less games are supporting it. They don't run as well. Yeah. They don't update it, so therefore it doesn't use both of them. Mm. So then it just becomes a bottleneck in the game. Like you're actually, I've seen myself run higher once I went with the single than both, yeah. which was weird. And it never used to be like that. I used to always do dual cards, yeah. and then now suddenly there's no point. So. Yeah, I've always thought single GPU is apparently the way to go. Also, Man, listen Beastly. to you nerds talk about this stuff. It's just, ah. Anyway, look. PC specs are fun to talk about. Beastly. It, uh, it DJ is. wants to get a pic of you in a British top hat on a shirt. Sipping tea. In a British top hat? Yeah, sipping tea on a shirt. Hey, that sounds great. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, I'll make it happen. Um, the Steam Link is fucking awesome. And I didn't think it was able to, I mean, it's kind of off the subject, but it really isn't for me. Uh, I ordered mine. It was on sale. I yeah, got the whole thing whatever at this point. with shipping cool. for $10. It came. 
I opened up the box. I connected to TV in the living room, plugged in the Ethernet, and it's it's virtually lag free. I don't understand how that's even possible mm-hmm. because it's connected to the computer here in the office living room. It's probably through a wall, maybe twenty feet away, and I'm playing, you know, shooters, and it's lag free and it looks amazing. I was playing uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and of course on my PC it runs and looks much better than it does on the PS4 Pro, and I could see the difference on a 1080p TV in there. It just didn't look like the PlayStation 4. It looked like playing a PC game on a TV. It just, to me, technology is just unbelievable how fast it's moving and things like this exist. I feel like I sold my soul to the devil because somehow I got it for 10 bucks. Who do I owe? (laughs) Yeah. You know? The next technology, uh, like, I'm trying to get, which I'm thinking of getting... I'm going to try it out. If it doesn't work, I'll send it back. It's a Logitech Brio, which is, uh, I think it's how you say it. Um, it's an ultra HD webcam. So it's 4K. It's 60 oh, I know what this frames is. per yeah, second. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try to get that webcam, which is an upgrade from this Logitech here. Mm-hmm. I want to see how it works, especially now that I have like the speed of it to see oh, yeah. um, how it's going to work. You know, Because uh, if I'm live streaming and stuff like that, I want to see... It's called what, what? What is it? The, the C. It's Logitech time? Brio, B R I O. Oh man! And maybe it's Brio. I'm guessing it's Brio. That's yeah. how I would say it's, it's Brio. It's Brio. Yeah. Oh. So. That's not that expensive either. Yeah, it's not that expensive. It's 4K and it's 60 frames per second. It says on there, and it, it could do, I think, 1080p at a, like over 60 frames. That's crazy. So like it. And it has like five times zoom and stuff like that. Not that you want to see me five times the zoom, but I'm just letting you guys know. <laughs> hey, if you want it, there you go. Yeah. So that's funny. Yeah. All right, so, so it looks cool. <laughs> I think I think that's about it, guys. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to string people along. You know, I could tell everybody about. I took some colon cleanse yesterday. It was pretty cool. Uh, well, <laughs> no, it wasn't. I had a really horrible morning. Anyway, I think that is episode six of Beastly Thoughts. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody uh, once again for for joining us and hanging out and just shooting the shit, talking video games. I'd like to thank my co-host, Robbie. Not too nerdy. I love you guys. You're amazing. Me too. Thank you. you I love the passion. Not too nerdy. I love the new backdrop. It looks like you can just jump out the window and dive into a pool. Uh, if there's not, <laughs> Hopefully there's, there's, there's a no pool out there before you jump. Yeah, there's no pool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then don't do it. <laughs> I like how huge that window is, man. It's just really yeah. Nice, nice new pad. I, I got, I got to fix it. All. I got to go to the. I Home can see Depot. what you got going over there on the right <laughs> side. That's, I know that's going to be lots of nerd culture over there in those yeah. cubicles, man. Uh, I got stuff on this side too. There's a bunch of stuff here, so you, I mean, you just see. You know, lucky that's not in my house. I have a kid in each one of those. <laughs> yeah. Work fast. Uh, so, what are you guys going to be up to this week? Uh, I'm gonna be streaming more Sea of Thieves, playing Destiny 2. I gotta, I haven't even tried the new update. I gotta do it. Sea of Thieves, I love the new update, honestly. So much fun. And I'm gonna be playing that probably later today as well, because I'll be streaming as well. Has anyone been playing Call of Duty, uh, beta? No, I finally decided (laughs) to pre order it, so uh, hopefully I get the code before it ends on PS4. I was just waiting for PC, but that changed my mind. I pre ordered it over a month ago. When they showed the new map packs for Black Ops Three mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. from Black Ops, you can 2. go download it now, Beastly. Like you can go get it. What the hell am I talking to you idiots for? <laughs> go get it. The, the only thing is, like, I I just I'm really just waiting. I don't really care about the the beta that much. I'm waiting for the one mode everyone's waiting for. That's the beta I'm waiting for. Like, so that's what you I really care about. Royale. That's Blackout. what I want to really yeah. test right now because I already know how Call of Duty plays. When I saw people playing it, it plays the same way every oh, Call yeah. of Duty. I saw Thunder played. play it yesterday. It yeah. looked like Call of Duty. I'm, so I'm just saying nothing has changed. I'm waiting for the part that did change. That's what I'm waiting for. That's what I'm Well, I'm really sure it plays very similar, but I think uh, the core mechanics, like even just the healing thing and like more health and stuff oh, like yeah, that, yeah, like yeah, it seems more yourself. tactical. If, look, it yeah. still looks like it plays like a Call of Duty game, of course, but yeah. I think it, they have changed things up significantly. Like I'm very excited to try it. Uh, I wish I'd pre ordered it earlier though on ps4 because now i'm like i wish i would have just been able to stream the beta today but that's my mistake it's a 30 gig download so i probably won't be playing today either uh, maybe we can get together and play a little bit together tomorrow like Robbie. pc ver- when the pc beta is out 100 percent i'll be playing it like i already got that code wait when you guys so. get play tomorrow uh i'm gonna download it today i'm gonna go get some bourbon whenever and- i get yeah, the code i'll, do it. I'll download <laughs> it too then now you, you guys want to play on ps4 yeah yes 100 let's do that let's do it i'll play it tomorrow yeah okay uh 
hit me. Let's get together on Twitter because we're ironing out the details before our audience. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We, we can get together on Twitter and we can decide a time and we can, you know, yeah. run for an hour or Assuming two. Assuming I get the code for my pre-order by like tomorrow or something, we can do that. I'm still If you can't, so. um, I'll find the code. I'm sure there's people I know that will get, have extra codes. So I'll get, we'll get codes. Yeah. You're don't like a fucking codes. ninja, man. Yeah. I'm saying, don't worry about codes. We'll get codes. Look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got your codes, baby. You want some codes, man? Hey, we got some, got some nice some codes, codes in here. Oh, code. got the trench coat. <laughs> got some extra beta codes for you, you know? Oh, These things are selling we'll, out like crack we'll, we'll cocaine, never, man. We'll Look what forget, I got in here. Oh, man. All right, guys. Uh, Robbie, you want to bid, bid them farewell? Farewell. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not how I'm going to do it. Uh, but yeah, everyone, thank you so much for watching today. We appreciate you tuning in, as always. And uh, Owen, RJ, hello there. Um, you're tuning in just at the end, but thank you for stopping by nonetheless. This is the Beastly Thoughts Show. We go live every Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern slash... 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, we talk about video games. We talk about a bunch of different news. It's a ton of fun. Uh, we just enjoy talking about stuff. And uh, we'll be live again at this exact time next Saturday. So thank you all so much for tuning in. We'll see you all in the next Beastly Thought Show. Have an awesome week, everyone. Peace! And we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Yeah.